You are good, you are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope. You have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. Oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I'm made whole. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, G Jesus. Oh. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. Welcome to worship today. It's good to see everybody. Oh, we're doing another song? Oh, okay. That was a good song. Oh, that's in a minute. Okay. Well, welcome to worship. Uh, we have a few announcements to share with you today. The first one, I think, mostly involves our online people, but uh, we want to let everybody know that we are aware there have been some issues, particularly when our videos are on Facebook with the audio getting muted. Um, uh, just so everybody knows, I've had some questions. We do pay for a streaming license that allows us to use the music that we're using, but they don't allow us to enter that in. So they take off the music, and then we have to tell them, hey, wait, we have a license, and then they put it back later. And it's becoming an obstacle to worship. Uh, so we are working toward using our uh, the company that runs our website, Faith Life. They handle the, the app and our website to start running our video streams through the website and the app rather than using social media. 
Um, our plan right now is that when we have that up and running in a week or two, um, hopefully by two weeks, um, to watch the video live, you would go to our church website or use it on the app. And then um, we would also post the recordings on things like Facebook and YouTube so you could watch it afterwards. But the live would be on our church website or on the app on your device so that we don't have to deal with the muting and all that. So we are working to get everything buttoned up on the back end before we go live with that. But uh, we want to let everybody know that that is on its way. Okay, a few other announcements. Pantry is coming up next Saturday, 8.30 to 11.30. Um, we found out that um, another church in town is going to be joining us. We're going to have, it looks like, six or seven brand new volunteers coming out to join us this Saturday. Amen. We're so excited. Uh, some of our friends from Trinity uh, United Methodist dropped off more food this weekend. Um, so those friends are going to be back there with us. Uh, Terry over there at Trinity, she is um, one of the volunteers for the pantry, but also she is their administrative assistant. She is doing a wonderful job connecting different churches. And so please pray for that. We're trying, we're hoping that these interchurch connections become something more than just the pantry, but keep praying for that. Um, some things that we can use. Uh, pasta, pasta sauce. We're good on peanut butter right now, but we are low on jelly. So we asked for peanut butter and jelly. We got a lot of peanut butter, but not enough jelly. So that peanut butter to jelly ratio is really, oh, it's a hard balance. So we can definitely use more jelly and uh, some of the other things up there. We can also use some of your garbage, um, not all your garbage, but um, empty, clean egg cartons and also plastic bags. If you have some that you were going to recycle, you can send them into us and we can reuse them. So those are some other ways you can contribute. If you're looking for a way to participate, there's even more options now than before. You can help us in our visits over to Village Arms. You can help with food deliveries. You can help with sorting or packing. Um, you can help on pantry day, lots of different options there, but all different ways to get involved. If you are not currently involved in a ministry, if you're not currently volunteering somewhere, this would be a great way to start that. So if you have questions, you can talk to Darlene or Jim and Carol, um, me at the bottom of the list because they know more about it than me. Um, but yeah, so next Saturday, 8.30 to 11.30, anybody you know who has a need, please send them to us. If you have a friend or a neighbor or a family member who needs food, you can come and pick up for them. So um, we want to make sure everybody who has a need gets a need. Um, yeah, wonderful donations. Um, last week, um, uh, Mark brought over a bunch of broccoli from the Sunday Breakfast Mission. So we have a bunch of broccoli to give. So that was a really cool thing because uh, Bushels of Blessing just finished up. So the fresh produce we were getting wasn't coming in anymore. And we were like, God, we really like to give vegetables. And then a truckload of broccoli showed up. So amen for that. Um, that's one of my favorite parts about the pantry is you get to see God meet needs in unexpected and beautiful ways. We have two training events that are coming up this month or within the next month in October. Um, there's a missions training day on Saturday, October 8th. We need to be registered for that by the 24th. So we have a couple people registered. If you are interested in that and have not yet told me or Diane, please tell us because we need to have that registration in by Friday. Um, that is, that is a, a time to train about what's going on in the district missions-wise, but also to talk about how missions works in the denomination. If you are interested in missions or possibly serving on our missions council, if you have ever felt a call to missions, um, they, they would all be great reasons to attend this training day. They always have a missionary speaker there, and um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a wonderful training time. We also have um, another training event coming. Oh, sorry, I'm out of order. Okay, it's in date order. Okay, um, are we sure about the location for the men? Okay, okay. So October, um, we are having our Salem County Men for Christ and Women for Christ breakfast again. We believe these are the right locations, but hold, you know, don't put it in your calendar just yet on that location, but the dates and times are definitely right. Saturday, October 15th, 
The men are going to be at 8 a.m., the women at 10 a.m. We are working to confirm locations. Um, we think it's going to be women at the River Church and men at Sharptown for one more month, but we're not definite on that. So we'll keep you posted. We've got a few weeks to get that settled. Okay, here is the other training opportunity, the Momentum Training Day. Now, this one is not until October 29th, but there is early bird registration, and it's $10 cheaper. And, you know, penny saved is a penny for alabaster, right? So if you are interested in Momentum, we would really like to register by October 1st so that we can get the discounted price. We have, I believe, at least four people going right now. Um, the focus of this training day is on becoming a disciple maker, on, on how to fulfill the Great Commission. And who does the Great Commission apply to? Everybody. So anybody who's interested is inviting, invited to attend this. Um, we can work to get you registered. We're going to carpool. If you want to drive yourself, you can, but, you know, carpool is always fun. Um, it's going to be at the Lansdale Church over in Pennsylvania, on October 29th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And uh, we've got some wonderful speakers. Um, Pastor Frank Shore is kind of heading up this event. Uh, Pastor Bud Reedy that a lot of you know, he's going to be speaking there. And um, a couple other pastors from Pennsylvania that, that Pastor Frank has met are going to be coming in to help teach. So um, we're, it looks like it's going to be a really awesome day. Uh, the Lansdale Church's worship team is going to be leading worship that day. So we're going to have a group time of worship. We're going to have a group session and then also some breakout sessions and lunch. So the, the idea is um, to be intentional, relational, and reproducible, right? That discipleship is not something that happens by accident, that it's done through connections between people, and that as a church, we're supposed to be reproducing, right? If we are a thriving, living body, we should be growing. So if you have questions about that, please talk to me. There is a QR code in the bulletin. If you want to scan that with your phone, it'll take you to the site so you can see all the details too. But uh, yeah, we're excited about that as well. Lots of stuff going on. Another thing going on, no, we are going to talk about that. Go back, thank you. Um, October 30th through November 2nd, we are having a fall zone revival. So you might say, Pastor Paul, what's the zone? Well, um, in our denomination, we kind of break the world up into first uh, world areas or regions, right? So we're in the USA, Canada region, okay? And then that's broken up into districts. We're in the Philadelphia district, which includes uh, roughly the southern half of Pennsylvania or the southern half of New Jersey and the eastern half of Pennsylvania, roughly. Um, so we have churches as far north as Trenton and as far east as Williamsport. So that's kind of our little corner of the Northeast. Now, our zone is Southern New Jersey. So that's, um, let's see, there's us, there's Cape May, there's Millville, there's Vineland, there's Bridgeton, there's Port Elizabeth, there's Northfield, and Pittman. Yeah, so there's eight churches in our zone, I believe, unless I did that wrong. And so those eight churches are going to be participating all together in revival services. Um, so these are a lot of people you might have seen at camp or other activities. We're going to be at the Bridgeton Church October 30th through November 2nd, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. We are not having any activities here at our church on those days. So October 30th is a Sunday, so no Sunday night service on the 30th, no men's group on the 31st, no women's ministry on the 1st, and no Wednesday night prayer meeting on the 2nd. All, all of our focus is going to be going together at Bridgeton. Now, I know it's a little bit of a drive, and not everybody's able to make it. We would like to arrange carpooling for people who want to do that, but also the Bridgeton Church will be live streaming all of the services. So if you go to Bridgeton Nazarene's website, they will be live streaming them on their church's website. So hopefully there's a way for lots of people to participate. Um, we are talking about the possibility of baptisms during this revival. So, if you have thought about getting baptized and are interested, this would be a really cool opportunity to do that. Any questions about our zone revival? Oh, speakers. We are going to have a different pastor from a different church speak each night. Pastor Carey is going to be speaking on November 2nd. And uh, 
let's see, Pastor Des from Millville is preaching one night. I believe Pastor Chris from Bridgeton is opening us up. And um, I, Pastor Shane, I think, is the other person preaching. But you'll get to hear different pastors every night. And um, the worship team is going to be made up of people from the worship teams of all the different churches. So it'll vary a little bit, but our own Pastor Matt Brown is helping lead that up. So um, it'll be a great, 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 great time of worship and revival. So please pray as we prepare, and we want everybody to be invited. Our last announcement is about Alabaster. We are off to a running start. You guys are doing so awesome. We have had multiple uh, $100 donations. So people are doing more than just putting pennies in their alabaster boxes. So thank you to everyone who's made donations. Um, our initial goal was to raise more than we've ever raised, which would put us in the $700 range. And somebody said, well, how about $1,700 range? So... That's our new stretch goal. We are going to try to hit $1,700 this month. That's a lot of money. That, that buys a lot of cinder blocks, right? So if you have not yet made a donation to Alabaster, you have the whole month of September to do that. If you would like to get geared up for the next time we do an Alabaster offering, you can take home an empty Alabaster box to fill up. Those are out in the foyer. And um, we're just really blessed. Um, Almost every week when we have our um, global prayer requests come in through NMI, we get to hear praises of the way Alabaster Money is helping missions happen around the globe. It's such a wonderful thing. And just in case you didn't hear in, in our previous announcements, 100% of the money that's donated to Alabaster goes to Alabaster Projects. The Church of the Nazarene covers all of the administrative costs. So everything that's donated goes to a project. None of this goes for staples and paper clips and copy machines, okay? It all goes for Alabaster Projects. Um, that's one of the strong commitments of the Church of the Nazarene. The same thing happens when you donate through Nazarene Compassionate Ministries. Like when we do disaster relief, the, 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 the denomination covers the administrative costs so that 100% of what is donated goes to the thing that you're supporting. So it's one of the things that we are very happy about in the Church of the Nazarene. And um, we want you to know that you can trust where your finances are going. So if you have any questions about Alabaster. I got one. You got one? Oh, what's your question? If you look at my display, it's missing something I need. What oh, is your display oh, missing? Put, putting money in. <gasps> That's what I need. Large denominational bills. I'll display them. I see a pretty big range there, Daryl. I got a dollar. I see a dollar bill over there. But I, I got new glasses, but what is over in that other box? And I see 100. I think that, that dollar bill has some zeros after it. Yeah. Well, that's pretty fancy, isn't so it? So I need a little help. There's a couple more empty boxes there to fill up. We could definitely fit a lot of $100 bills in that church. Yeah. Also, gold doubloons. <laughs> and Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. I don't know about Bitcoin. That's a little, yeah. Convert your Bitcoin to gold doubloons and then bring that in. Um, but yeah, um, thanks again to Daryl for uh, setting up our display. Um, one of the things we talked about in Sunday School is that we are very blessed in the United States to come from a very affluent culture, but also we have a very strong currency in the U.S., especially compared to some of the missional areas where we're serving. So while a dollar might only buy you half a cinder block at Lowe's, well, it can buy a bunch of cinder blocks in another country. So when we make donations here in America and are able to send that to other countries, that money stretches. It goes a long way. So this is a really wonderful way that you all, we all, can get involved in world missions. So if you want to go as a missionary, let's go to the NMI training. If you have some coins or $100 bills, let's support Alabaster. Um, we, have, we have committed as a church to be a 10% church, that means we've committed that we will tithe off of everything that comes into this church for missions. So that means at least 10% of all the money that comes into this church will go toward world missions. And this is the one, of, one of the ministries that we're doing to, to support that goal. So if you have any questions about that, the 10% thing, Alabaster missions, 
talk to me, talk to one of our board members. We'd love to talk to you more about it. Um, we have lots of people in the church. Um, can you raise your hand if you've been on a work and witness trip? Yeah, a bunch of people. Um, so if you have questions, talk to one of those people. It's a beautiful experience. All right, I think that's all of our announcements, right? Okay, we've got some birthdays and an anniversary to celebrate today. So I'm going to ask my songbirds to come up and help me with my happy birthday song. But um, our birthdays this week are Stephanie Wolfer, George Minogue, Adam Demarest, and Cassie Shorts. But also tomorrow is Jim and Carol's anniversary. Oh, So we're saying happy birthday to Jim and Carol. Sorry, happy anniversary to Jim and Carol. And happy birthday to Stephanie, George, Adam, and Cassie. All right? Uh, Casey. Casey? Sorry. Sorry. I was mixing her. Okay. Sorry. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. I did it a little too low. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And happy anniversary. All right. Well, let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for koinonia. Thank you for fellowship, for community. Thank you for the chance to gather together in your name and worship. Thank you for this beautiful day. Father, thank you that as we go through these milestones of life, like birthdays and anniversaries, that we can celebrate them together. And Father, thank you that as we go through the hard times of life, through the valleys, that we can sit with each other, minister through our presence. Father, thank you that we get to be a part of your body. And thank you for this chance to come together and worship your name today. Father, I pray that you would please help us, that you would help us to focus our minds and our hearts on you, that you would help us to put aside distractions and worries and to worship you right now with all that we are. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. 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 We're going to begin our worship in song with the song, Even So Come. So please stand with us if you're able and join us with the song. All of the earth make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saint, let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so come. Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. There will be justice, all will be new, your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so come. Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait. 
you're coming soon. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you're coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church, we'll be ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing like a bride waiting for her groom we'll be a church we'll be ready for you every heart longing for our king we sing even so come lord jesus come even so come Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. Lord Jesus, come. Okay, we're going to go right into our next song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life i know that it is finished i will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but i will boast in jesus christ his death and resurrection why should i gain from his reward i cannot give an answer but this i know with all my heart his wounds have paid my ransom why should i gain from his reward i cannot give an answer but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Amen. 
We ask if you are able to please remain standing for the reading of God's word. Thank you. surging Silla. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, you may be seated. Can you go back to verse one for me? Um, you probably heard some of the things noted in this psalm, right? Earthquakes and floods and wars and We've kind of got all of them on our plate right now, right? The war in Ukraine is still raging. Two more countries have been invaded. We've got a giant hurricane, uh, Fiona, barreling towards Puerto Rico, and who knows where else after that. Um, we have droughts and fires. We have floods. Um, we have diseases. Um, I don't know who had monkeypox on their bingo card, but, you know, you just got another one. Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now, right? And when we hear or see these things going on, it can cause some fear, right? But this psalm is to remind us that no matter what we face, our refuge is not in um, higher walls or bigger boats or <laughs> better firefighting equipment, right? Our refuge is God. Our refuge is God himself. And that he promises to be there with us and for us. And if my understanding of Scripture is at all correct, we know that before things get better, they're going to get a little bit worse, right? And it's words like this that remind us, well, that's going to happen, but we don't have to be afraid, right? We can make it through the hard time because we know that something better is coming, and we know that even in the midst of these difficulties, we are not alone. You are not alone. So um, David writes of that a lot, you know, he, uh, he went through spiritual valleys and physical valleys when he talks about people wanting to kill him. Sometimes that's really what it was, right? When he talks about wars and fortresses, sometimes he's really talking about wars and fortresses. But other times he's talking about those spiritual valleys, those places he's been. So I want to encourage you, spend some time in the Psalms. If you aren't already doing it, you know, spend some time there. I think you'll, uh, you'll find some gems. It'll touch your heart. So as we continue in our service today, uh, we're going to transition into the time of worship through giving. It's a time where we give back God's tithe and our offerings, a time where we say thank you to God for all he has done to provide for us, and a time where we give sacrificially to help others. So please join us uh, in a prayer of blessing over the offering. Father God, Thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you have given to us. Father, even with all the time left in the world, I would not be able to name all the things you've done for us. And so we say thank you. Thank you for creating us and sustaining us. Thank you for loving us and saving us. Father, thank you for the gift of your son and the gift of your spirit. Thank you for the gift of your word this chance to be here with breath in our lungs singing praises to your name father as we give back our humble gifts as we give back your tithes and our offerings i pray that you would be with each and every one of us in heart and in mind father i ask that you would guide us on how and what to give that you would help us to do so cheerfully for the building of your kingdom Father, I also pray for wisdom for our church leadership, both in our food pantry and in our church board, that you would help us to be good stewards of the resources that you've entrusted us with. 
Help us to use them to meet the physical and spiritual needs of your people. Help us to use this wisely for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. During offering, we'll be singing, O Come to the Altar. So please uh, feel free to stand with us once the um, basket has passed your row. Hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you thrown to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood Oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing alleluia, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And of course, we can do that anywhere we are. But we're in church right now, and we have an altar. And you are invited to come to this altar. As we play the next song, um, we're going to play Greatest Thy Faithfulness. It's one that many of you might know. It sings of God's great love and faithfulness towards us. If you'd like to meditate on a scripture passage while we pray, uh, the psalm that we just read, Psalm 46, I'd say, check out verse 1. The reminder that God is our refuge and our strength and that he is always ready to help. 
So as we have this next song playing, I invite you to join us in a posture of prayer. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel, you can come to the altar, but join us in a time of prayer. Thank you for your love, your faithful, boundless, sacrificial, consistent love. Father, thank you. Thank you that even though we see the storms of life swirling around us, that you are there as our rock, as our foundation, as our, our refuge, our fortress, our shield, the horn of our salvation. Father, thank you. Thank you for caring. Thank you for loving and thank you for being with us. Father, thank you for loving us first. Thank you for inviting us into a relationship with you. And Father, thank you for making a way for that relationship to happen. Thank you, Father. Father God, as we come before you today, there is so much swirling in our hearts. So many people, individuals, and families in our congregation are dealing with hard times right now, Father, with, 
with medical troubles, with financial troubles, with relationship problems. Father, we look at the world and we see storms and natural disasters and wars. And Father, we, we cry out. We cry out to you. I pray that when we experience these things, Father, that they would not drive us away from you, but they would remind us to turn towards you. Father, I know that it is not within our strength or our wisdom to solve or fix these issues. I know that we're not smart enough to figure a way out of humans having war, and we're not strong enough to stop a hurricane. Father, help us to admit our shortcomings and our need. Help us to know it. As our brother Paul said, Father, help us to know that your grace is sufficient. And help us to experience your power made perfect in our weakness. Father, I also pray that you would help us not to, to be fatigued over the level of need that we encounter. Whenever possible, Father, help us to help. <laughs> help us to see the need, to recognize how we might be able to help and to step in. Father, I know that we cannot feed every hungry person in the world and I know that we cannot clothe every cold person in the world. But I pray that wherever possible, you would help us to love like you love, to love sacrificially. Father, help us to experience that. These things that I'm asking for, Father, the changes in our hearts and, and the help to love, I don't just pray for them for us as individuals. I, I ask them for us as a community, and, and I don't just mean our church, Father. I mean our town, our, our state, our nation. Father, help us to come together as your children. I echo the prayer that your son prayed in John 17. Father, help us to know unity. Help us to be united in our love for you, our worship of you, our obedience to Christ. Father, help us to be different. I pray that when the world looks at your children, that they would have no doubt that we belong to you that they would see the family resemblance, not in how we look, but in how we live. So Father, help our lives change so that we bear a resemblance to your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I wanted to start out today talking about questions. Were any of you a why child? Do you know what a why child is? The kid that always wants to say why. Why are we going here? Why are we going there? Why did that do that? Why does this happen there? I was a why child. Anybody else? Are you surprised, Charlie? It's hard to remember. Yeah. It's hard to remember. Um, my mother's wish came true, and I was blessed with two why children. Although their whys are different, especially as they get older. Um, but you've, you ever notice that people, we just, we want to know? We want to know why? Why did you do that? Why does that happen? Why is this there? Why can't we do it this way? Um, you know, I think those why questions um, about the Bible, well, especially when we look at people in the Bible who ask those why questions, sometimes it leads to a beautiful encounter with God, right? When people turn to God for the answers to those why questions. But sometimes it leads to disaster, especially when people turn to a source other than God for the answers to those why questions. I think the, some of the most disastrous are when we try to find the answer ourselves, like the pokey little puppy, right? Uh, Adam and Eve, had a why question, right? Why can't I eat that? Right? I mean, God said not to, but it looks good. Why can't I have that? David looked down from a roof into a window and said, why? Why can't I have Bathsheba? I'm the king after all. 
you know, those why questions, they can get us into trouble. Maybe the hardest one or the most consistent one is, why can't I do it my way? Why can't I do it my way? I find as a parent that those are the encounters that um, bring the most vain, bulging rage to my life, right? Um, when, when, I, when I ask my kids to do something a certain way and they insist on doing it a different way, um, yeah. And I'm praying to Jesus about that, but I think I get a little bit of taste of what it's like for God sometimes, right? When God says, can you just do it this way? If, can you just love each other? But why? Or but who? Or but how? I don't want to do it that way. You know, some of the instructions in the Bible, some of the why answers, we like the practical ones, right? Um, I was trying to think if I could pick a favorite proverb. Um, I have a couple. I narrowed it down to two of my favorite proverbs that I think everybody can agree on. Okay, one of them is Proverbs twenty-five seventeen: Do not visit your neighbors too often, or you will wear out your welcome. Right? I think we might all lean on that one sometimes. And maybe my favorite proverb, um, jokingly, is Proverbs twenty-seven fourteen: A loud and cheerful greeting early in the morning will be received as a curse. Right? Some of those Proverbs we get, right? Because it's like, if you do this, this will happen. So I get, I get to be involved in the whole process, right? I know what's happening. I know why it's happening. And I know what the desired result is going to be, right? If I give a loud and cheerful greeting early in the morning, eventually my neighbors are going to get fed up with it, right? Because either they're asleep and I woke them up or they're awake and they're having their coffee and I'm bugging them, right? We, we can connect those dots, right? But sometimes there are some more open-ended commands in the Bible, some commands that there isn't that direct A, B, C kind of logic to them. And honestly, some of the commands in the Bible are not necessarily logical, right? Um, loving another person sacrificially isn't always the best thing for me, right? Um, sometimes I want to eat both of the halves of the share size Snickers, and I don't want to give one to Jill. Right? I want to share with myself. I, des I deserve it. Don't I deserve a break today? That's what Snickers says. That's Kit Kat. Oh, that's right. See, I don't even know my candies, right? Anyway, I'll just have to eat more candy so I can get the logos right. Anyway, some of them are hard, um, like the Great Commandment, right? When when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment is, and he said, love the Lord your God with everything that you are. And he said, the second is the same, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you see, the, the problem is that that varies depending on who your neighbor is, right? Uh, right now, we like our neighbors. We have good neighbors, right? Um, we have not always gotten along with all of our neighbors through the years. Um, we've lived in apartments, and we've lived in duplexes, and Sometimes when your house shares walls and floors and ceilings with people, you don't always want to love your neighbor. Sometimes you want to poke them with a broom handle and tell them to go to sleep. Um, I read a quote yesterday, and it was attributed to N.T. Wright. Um, I don't know if he's the one who first coined it, but he said that there can be, he said that, Relationships are easy without holiness, and holiness is easy without relationship. Right? It's easy to get along with somebody when I don't care about the outcome, when I don't care about the person, because you just go along to get along, right? And it's easy to have a personal piety when I don't have to deal with any other people. You know, loving my neighbor is easy if I am in the middle of the wilderness alone in a cave, right? Because there's nobody there who wants to borrow my jacket. It's when the commands and the people and the relationships, when the beliefs and the behavior, when all that mix happens, that's when things start to get hard. And, um, you know, Jesus takes it a step further, like in the Sermon on the Mount, 
And he says, some of those rules, they're not just about the actual action. They're about what's in our heart. That gets really hard. Like in Matthew 5, when he says, you know, you've been told, don't murder. But I say, if you're even angry, you're, you're subject to judgment, right? And I was like, wait, you said I couldn't kill him. You didn't say I couldn't yell at him. Actually, he did kind of say that. But he says, if we do that, if we curse people, we're in danger of the fires of hell. You know what I think of when I read that? There are a lot of people on social media who are in danger of the fires of hell. We get into some of these communication mediums where the relationships are a little bit separate, where we don't see people face to face. And man, the curses start flying, don't they? So today, I want to talk a little bit more from the Gospel of John, something else that Jesus said. Um, trying to pull some of these pieces together, right? About being who we're supposed to be, who we were made to be. I'm going to read John chapter 14, verse 23. And Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. It's a short one, so I'm going to read it again. Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Now, I know it starts with Jesus replied, and we will get to what he was saying before that. But first, I want to just rest in this statement for a little bit, these two sentences. I automatically jump into the why, right? Why do we need to do what Jesus says? Why? What do you guys think? Why do we need to do what Jesus says? It's what's best. Ah, see, you jumped right to the big answer. It's what's best. Do you guys agree with Charlene's answer? It's a pretty good answer, I gotta admit. It's a pretty good answer. Because we love Jesus, and that's what's best. They go together, yeah. Because we love Jesus, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I didn't hear anybody say, so we don't go to hell. Nobody said that, right? But you know, for years, a lot of what has past for evangelism has been about that, right? right? You're going to burn. You better get fire insurance. Um, now, that's true. That's true, right? Without forgiveness, without repentance, we are ultimately doomed, right? We will be forever separated from God. Um, yeah, that's not a future I even really want to spend too much time contemplating. It's so dark and hopeless. But there's an alternative, right? The alternative to the forever punishment, separation, torment is, is what? Gold? Like Scrooge McDuck? Is that why the streets are made of gold? That's another why question I got asked. You ever wonder why the streets are made of gold? Is it so we can all have all the gold we want? No, it's because in heaven, gold's not going to matter. The thing that's the most precious to us here on this earth, gold, we're going to put it on the floor. <laughs> Right? It's not going to matter to us. It's not going to matter. You know, Jesus wants us to have a right relationship. It's right there in the verse, and I'm, I'm guessing that's probably why Charlene and Jim went the direction they went with their answers. Um, you know, we listen to a teacher so we can learn, so we can pass a test, right? We listen to a coach so we can develop our skills or so that we can win a game. But when we listen to Jesus, it's, it's a different kind of game, right? We're not trying to pass a test. We're not trying to win a game. We're trying to change, right? Um, somebody once said that most books are read for information, but the Bible is read for transformation, right? So when we come to read the words of Jesus, when we study his life, when we learn what has been said by him, and through him, through other teachers in scripture. It's so that we can change, so that we can change because he's offering us something different. You know, 
in earlier verses, Jesus has directly addressed hell and eternity. But here, he's speaking of eternity in a different way. In chapter 14, he's speaking of eternity in the affirmative, of a gift that is being offered, right? Because ultimately, our goal is not just to avoid punishment, right? If, you know, my only goal in life is to not go to prison, is that going to make me a good citizen? No, in fact, it might make me a good criminal, right? (laughs) Avoiding punishment does not bring about the right goal, right? Jesus is inviting us into relationship with God. Do you remember what John the Baptist said? What did John the Baptist say? Repent, right? And do you remember why he said repent? He said repent for the okay yeah for the kingdom of heaven is near do you think that was a threat do you think that was a threat when my mom was a kid her dad worked shift work and my grandmother did sometimes use that phrase right wait till your father gets home right um yeah she told me this story the other day when she was growing up they had a Weimaraner, um, you know, the, the German short hair bird dog. She was really smart. And her name was Queenie. And Queenie knew that she was not supposed to be on the second floor of the house. That's where all the bedrooms were, right? And so my grandfather had trained her to not go on the second floor, right? But when my grandfather would work the overnight shift, they called it Hudal. When, when he worked the overnight shift, do you know what Queenie would do? Yeah, she'd go upstairs and she'd climb in my mom's bed. And do you know what she would do when she heard my grandfather's truck pull in the driveway? She would run back downstairs and sit at the back door, acting like she had been downstairs the whole night, right? You see, she had mixed motivations, right? She didn't want to get punished, but she also wanted to sleep in the bed upstairs. And so her behavior became kind of dualistic, right? When she knew my grandfather was there and paying attention, when she'd get in trouble, she stayed on the first floor. But when she knew she wasn't going to get in trouble for it, she snuck up in the bed. Now, you might be thinking, Pastor Paul, why are we talking about dogs? Well, because Queenie was an awesome dog. She had pet chipmunks. I'll tell you about that some other time if you want. But it's because it's what we do, right? If my only goal is to avoid punishment, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look for loopholes, right? And this is what they do in the Bible all the time, right? This is what happened with Adam and Eve and the serpent, right? You know, if if you eat it, you'll die. You know, God said don't eat it. And the snake was like, well, did God really say that? You know, God just doesn't want you to be like him. You're not going to die. And then she was like, well, maybe I won't die. Now, she's got God and she's got a snake. Why is she listening to the snake? Is it because the snake was so coercive and gave this, like, you know, novel, long soliloquy about why she should eat the fruit, and he had a PowerPoint about the nutritional content of the fruit and all that? No, it's because she already wanted to eat the fruit, right? Nobody had to give Queenie a treat to get her up into the bed because she wanted to get in the bed. She was just avoiding punishment. See, that, that gets us into a very dangerous situation of loopholes and well what ifs and well maybe the bible doesn't does the bible really say that right i'll tell you this i can't even tell you how many times i've heard this argument well it's okay that we're living together because we want to be married and if it weren't for the money of the wedding we we would be married so really it's like we're married and so it's okay right right no Um, It's okay if I kill that person because they were trying to steal my car, right? And the state says if they're, and I can kill, and that's okay, right? But is that what God says? Does God say you can live with whoever you want because if the only barrier is saving up money for a bridezilla wedding, it's okay to just cohabitate? Does God say that? Does God say, oh, no, it's okay to kill people if they want your stuff. Your stuff's way more important than other people. Does, does God say those things? No. 
See, when we try to make loopholes, do you know what we end up doing? We sin. <laughs> we sin, right? We sin. John 14, 23, I'm going to read it again. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. See, Jesus doesn't say, do what I say or I'll smite you, right? He doesn't say, God is waiting with his magnifying glass to burn you if you don't, you know, do everything just right. He's offering an invitation. He's saying, I'm inviting you into loving relationship, right? I'm offering what's best for you. That's what you said, right, Charlene? And I, because we love each other, right, Jim? Right? I'm inviting you into this relationship. I'm inviting you into this way of living because it's what's best for you. It's how you were made. See, we were made to live in relationship, in relationship with each other and relationship with God. But sin violates that relationship. Sin puts us ahead of God, ahead of other people, ahead of everything. And that's not the way we were made to live. Right? Jesus is saying, you've tried your way and clearly it's not working, right? Look around us. It ain't working, right? Look at the news. Look at the internet. Our, our, our means, our wisdom, our plans, they don't work. They hurt people. They hurt people. God is saying there's a different way, a better way. And he's saying the result of that way is fellowship. Right? It's fellowship. Earlier in chapter 14, you know, um, when Jesus starts this conversation, um, John 14, 1 through 3 is, is a passage you might have heard before where Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled, right? It's okay, don't worry. He says, trust in God and trust in me. He says, there is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be where I am. Right? Now, I don't know that heaven is just going to be one big house with lots of bunk beds. Not real sure about that. But Jesus is communicating a truth, right? He is preparing a way for us to be together right? To be cared for, to be provided for, to be loved, but also to love each other. And he's saying, I I'm telling you the truth. You can trust this. And that's what chapter 14 is bookended with, right? He promises that he's preparing the place. And now in verse 23, where we just read, Jesus is letting us know how we get in on that, right? How we get to experience that, you know? This is where the house key is hidden, right? This is how you get into the mansion, by listening, by following, by being a disciple, by not just avoiding the bad things, but also doing the affirmative, living as we were told to live, right? If the best I can say about my day is I didn't murder anybody, that doesn't really mean I'm being obedient to Christ, does it? That doesn't mean I was being loving, I think that's why Jesus answered his question about the great commandment the way he did, right? He didn't say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, because we'll always find a loophole, right? You've heard me say this a million times, right? If you tell a kid to not run in the hallway at school, what are they going to do? They're going to skip. And you tell them not to skip, they're going to do cartwheels. You tell them not to do cartwheels, they're going to do forward rolls. You tell them not to do forward rolls, they're going to do log rolls. You know, you tell them not to do log rolls, they're going to do the worm right, and so on and so forth, right? And the list is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's, ugh, right? That's the law. But Jesus gives an invitation to love. Jesus offers an invitation to be loved, to love, to experience love. He wants us to receive his promise. He wants us to receive his gift. He wants to have us live the best for us, right? the best. Jesus wants a full house, right? Jesus wants a full house. You see this, if you start looking at this pattern in John, you see that Jesus directly connects his obedience to God and his behavior and his relationship with God. They're all connected, right? Um, 
a few weeks ago, we, we talked about John 5, 19, where Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. He's trying to establish a pattern, right? Jesus is our model, right? He is our model of, of what a human should be, what a human can be. And his model is to be in obedience to the will of the Father and to live in right relationship with the Father, to have unity. And that unity isn't just something for Jesus to have. It's something he wants us to have too. When he prays for us in John 17, he says he prays that we, all believers forever, that, that we would all be one just as God and Jesus are one. He says, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. Can you imagine that? Jesus wants us to experience the same love and unity that the Trinity experiences. A love and unity that's so profound, we can barely even think about it, right? Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? Can you imagine that? To, to be so closely identified with another person that when somebody sees you, they can say they're seeing that person. It's like an identical twin, right? Yeah, except even more so, even more so. This is what Jesus wants for us, to be united, right? And when we choose sin, when we choose a different path, we choose to break that relationship. The way we see that happen in the garden is that before the fall, God came and walked with Adam and Eve, and they talked together, right? And everything was... was uh, copacetic, right? It was beautiful. It was peaceful. It was connected. And when they chose sin, they had to leave the garden. They were separated from God. And it starts this cascade of sin where people are grasping and clawing and afraid and angry. You know, you have Cain killing his brother. The first death in the Bible is a murder, right? And so on and so forth. Tower of Babel, Noah and the ark, it keeps going, right? God doesn't want us to live that way. He doesn't want us to live at each other's throats, right? God doesn't want us to live in such a way that seeking our good causes harm to someone else, right? When Jesus loved, he loved in such a way that he put the other first, right? He did what was best for the other person. And most of what the world tells us to do is to do what's best for us at the expense of the other. Did I ever tell you guys a story about a friend of mine who sold a used car? This will be where we close. So this guy, he was selling a used car. It was a Honda Accord. And I uh, probably shouldn't share any more details in case you know who this is. But he was selling a Honda Accord, and he had this problem. He'd been driving it for a while. It was used, but it was in decent shape. And the alternator went bad on it, Right? So that's the part that charges the battery, okay? And so he, he knew he couldn't sell it if it wouldn't start or run. So did he buy a new alternator and fix it? No, you know what he did? He charged the battery. Yep, <laughs> he charged the battery. And then he hurried up, took it off the charger, drove it to the person's house who was buying it, and there was just enough charge in that battery to get the car over to the house. And he said, see, look, it runs. I drove it over here. And then the person got the money. And you know what happened the next day when that person tried to start it? Wouldn't start. See, in that situation, you have one individual putting their gain at the expense of someone else, right? I'm going to rip you off so I can get more money from my car. And that's kind of how we're taught to do business in this world, right? I'm, gonna, I'm going to win by getting it over on you so that I can have what I want. Jesus in John 14, 23 is saying, no, that if we want to be in right relationship with God, then it's got to start with love. And if we want to love Jesus, we have to do what he says. We have to do what he says. And if we sum up everything that Jesus teaches in one command, do you know what that command is? To love. That's what it all comes back to, right? To love. Now, maybe it is a matter of trying to stay out of hell. I don't really want to be in a lake of fire for eternity. I don't know about you guys. Maybe it's a matter of getting into heaven. You know, heaven sounds like a pretty cool place, right? 
but maybe it's about understanding what's best for us, right? Living what's best for us. And not just for me, but for you, for all of us. Because when we live this life of love, when we experience this unity, it's for all of us, right? That's the picture Jesus paints, a whole big family living together in one house, getting along and being happy. This is what he wants for us, but it only happens when we listen to him. When we choose sin, we break this promise. When we choose sin, we build a wall in this relationship. Jesus is saying, don't do that, right? He wants us to find our way home to him. We're lost, but he wants us to be found. So if you know that, if you have been found, amen, thank God. If you haven't, know that God loves you, that he desires a relationship with you, that he loves you so much that he gave his son for you. And here's the last thing. If you do know this, go invite other people Jesus said himself, there's lots of rooms and he wants them all to be full. Go tell somebody, right? Go tell somebody. Please join me in prayer. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this chapter in John where we can read the words of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would help us to love you, to love Jesus with all that we are. I pray that we would experience what it is to have you come and make your home with us, to dwell with you, that you would be our God and we would be your people. Like it says in the prophets, like it says in Revelation. Father, I pray that we would know that, that love, that unity, that shalom, that contentment, security, Father, help us to know that deep inside. Help us to know that your grace is sufficient. Father, help us to experience the transforming power of your Holy Spirit where we would be able to consistently love other people. Father, help us to do that. Help us to love others. Help us to put others first, to not try to seek what's best for us, to control and manipulate and exploit Father, help us to put those ways behind us and to go forward as your children, as your disciples, living as your son taught us to live. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We'll be finishing up the service this morning with the song Forever Rain, so please stand with us if you're able and join us in the song. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace, when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. Oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. 
You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I made whole. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. Oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Right of the world forever reign. Please join me in a closing prayer. Father God, that song is a song of hope, a song when we will look forward to your forever reign. And Father, I pray that that reign would start in each of our hearts today, that that reign would start in our church, that we would experience the kingdom of heaven come near, that we would experience the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, that we would experience the cleansing power of your son's blood and the transforming power of your work within our lives. Father, I pray like, like Ezekiel spoke, to have our stony hearts taken out and, and to have tender hearts that would seek to follow you. Or like Paul said, that we would offer ourselves to you as living sacrifices and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Father, help us to be yours through and through to know what that is, and to shine, to shine with your glory and love so that others in darkness might receive that invitation. Help us to be yours, Father. We pray that your Son would be sovereign in our lives, in our world, that we would experience your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Go in God's grace be God's people. Don't forget, we're back here tonight at 6. The adults, we're, we're talking about, we're in the Gospel of John, and we're going to be in here. The kids are going to be down the hallway. I don't know what cereal is tonight. I think it's Apple Jacks. I don't even know what that's going to be about, but I'll bet it'll be good. And uh, also dinner afterwards for anybody who can stay. So we'll see you tonight.